Hey, this is your guy, the energy coach. And today we are going to be checking the energy when it comes to relationship and dating outside your so-called race. Um, I'm going to start with this video. I don't necessarily agree with bro say, but he do got some interesting points. Uh, some points, maybe yes, but some things I don't agree with. But let's just go ahead and play it. Y'all sisters, y'all need to stop this <laughs> Y'all be the most hate motherfucker be hating on the, uh, them, them brothers getting a white woman y'all be the first one to criticize them look at them crazy y'all couldn't handle us go get you a white girl because you couldn't handle us well first of all man shouldn't have to handle your crazy ass anyway and if he has to he need to put your ass behind some padded walls okay so i do agree with the handling part i don't think nobody should have to handle anybody but as far as the whole i don't i, I see it so much from both sides you know when it comes to dating outside of um our so-called race but let me let me let him continue before i go ahead and speak on it this shit's crazy man y'all know y'all don't like that y'all just like it more than than than, than the brothers seeing y'all with a black a white man we don't give a shit more than like we think y'all 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 crazy anyway because y'all got that white boy because he don't want to put up with your crazy ass that's what we think i don't care that he took you there's plenty of you heifers out there what i'm gonna fight for you for and a black man of a certain status could get any race of woman. Black women can't say that. So <laughs> to sit there and say, man, oh, well, you know, we don't, y'all could, y'all could, y'all, y'all will look at them crazy shit in a racial couple. And y'all, y'all sisters, y'all need to stop. Okay. So like I said, I don't necessarily agree with what he's saying. Um, a couple of things. I do agree with the part about the, um, nobody needs to be handled. That's, that's about as most um as far as with the dating outside your race in my experience my personal experiences from being overseas i feel like when it comes to our people we are um everybody loves us you know so i feel like we creme de la creme you know wherever we go it's only here in america especially amongst each other that we have this kind of opposite uh, narrative when it comes to being together. And honestly, I feel like that is a COINTELPRO, um, CIA it programming, you know, like it's been so many different generations. They done did so many different, um, so many different plans, so many different things to tear us apart. The last one being um, using music, you know, with psychological programming to keep us, you feel me, apart and to keep us putting each other down, you know, um, and just, the newest thing with this whole social media and these podcasts pending us up against each other. I don't really see it too much like that when it comes to other people, but I see it so much with us, you know, and with, he said, as far as like females be upset. Yeah. I've seen females be upset online, you know, when they see pictures of, um, of so-called black men with so-called, uh, white women or dating with other, uh, races, but, I think a lot of it be just like I've seen the same from, you know, men um, when it's a so-called black woman and a so-called white man. But I think the thing that is most of the trigger is the words that's in the trigger um, when it's in the post. I think that's the thing that is what makes people upset because it's like you're saying one is better than the other. And that's not the case. Um, I seen a comment on here that I really liked it. Um he said, nah, as a black man, we got to prioritize our women over any other race of women. We need our black women and not all of them act crazy. This is an idea that we can do better outside of our women is extremely false and toxic. I thought that is the crazy thing that we think that outside of you feel me ourselves, we just necessarily do so much better. And it's not it's not like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. You should love whoever you want to love. You know, it's pros and cons with everybody. It's going to be pros and cons with everybody. It's going to be pros and cons with everybody. It just get presented in different kinds of ways. Uh, so um, I just want to speak on that real quick before I get into the video. And speaking of to get into the video, let me um, go ahead and touch on our sponsor. Um, so this is at the energy store, you know, take it up with some people. And we got the wellness-minds.com. And this is the Never Give Up course. It's a free course. So make sure y'all go get this. Check it out. Um, I'm going to put some links below in the um, in the description so y'all can check it out. 
It's a really fire course. Okay, so, but yeah, back to this. Um, yeah, I think that that was was, I think that was a little extreme. You know, I, I don't think that it was. I don't. I think we just need to do better with each other. I need. We, I think we need to realize the power that we have with each other. You know, um, because we we just for some reason we can't come together. You know, and I think that's the. That's the main thing, man. We got to be better and do our part so we can come together. And I and I believe that the women will, they will tag along and they will follow suit. Um, so let's see. Speaking. Of All right, y'all. So I seen a man say. I thought this video was interesting. Um, very very interesting. So I'm gonna let her play it. Ladies, why does our sense of discernment always tell us when a man? It's being unfaithful, but it, it never tells us when a man is unhappy. And I ain't gonna lie, it kind of made sense. We don't be seeing that shit coming. <laughs> but we can tell when that mofo is cheating. Ladies, do you want to answer this on comments? Because I want to know. I'm curious too. All right, y'all. Yeah, shout out to her. I think it's I am dot J Monique. Uh, she was on point. She said we always say you could have just told me you was unhappy. And the funny, a funny comment that I seen. Um, this girl said, "No, we see. We just ignore it for our own happiness." And I thought that was very, very true. And then uh, it was somebody else that said because the man's happiness is that triggers the intuition, not his unhappiness. Y'all, the fun police. <laughs> I thought that was that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny, um, but yeah, I I, I don't know because I always see that. Now I'm gonna bounce around a little bit because um, I thought this video was kind of crazy. I'm let she was talking about jailbirds being on one, and I'm like, dang, how bad is the dating pool out here? Let me let her just talk. Let me let her talk. She said jailbirds. Are are up one. Jailbirds are up one. Y'all dudes that's on the streets, y'all gotta step y'all game up. Y'all are losing to these dudes that's in the damn prison system, okay? I was on TikTok last night and I ran across a live. It was like four dudes that was in the feds. Um, so I just tapped in to be nosy to see what they were talking about. Do y'all know it's like, it was thousands of girls on there. Why she tap in? But go ahead, go ahead. Like being so fucking thirsty, asking these locked up dudes, oh, what's your JPay? I want to see you some money. I want to come see you. I want to be your pen pal. Like has the dating pool become that fucking bad that we got to reach out to niggas that's locked up for love? And these niggas is winning. Like they taking all the bitches, the bad ones too. Like y'all dudes on the streets got to step y'all game up. Y'all are losing terribly. To some niggas in the penitentiary. What? That's wild. I think it's um, something behind that as far as because, you know, I played a video not too long ago and he was talking about how the bad boy, you know, always win. And that, that's something that's still there, you know. So I'm not shocked at, at it, but I'm not going to say that they taking all, well, maybe the bad ones, but not the real ones. You feel me? Real ones, they, they not... Unless they was already together with dude when he went down, you know, but they not going to search, you feel me, there. I don't, I don't think, well, no, I don't think so. Not ones that actually have something established and they have something that is going for themselves and they trying to really build. They not, but it's many levels out here. It's many levels and it's many categories. You got to know you and use discernment with the type of woman that you picking and the type of woman that you choosing. So... Ah, I don't know. A lot of people do have low self-esteem, so uh, it could be a, a safe thing that they like controlling, you know? Um, let me see. So what was another? Ah, speaking of uh, people losing, so we were talking about men, women, men losing. Now let's talk about women. Are older women competing with younger women for the same attention? When did women in their late 30s, 40s, and 50s start competing with women in their 20s? It's a culture shift that happened. And this is the conversation. Okay, so, eight at the table. Let's see what they're talking about. Culture switched. And, like, when I was growing up, I used to want to be like Felicia Rashad because I looked up to women that were older. But at this point, older women <laughs> want to be younger. 
Yep. Right. So when you have 40 year old women and 46 year old women trying to look like and act like the 23 year old, then how do you know? Because when you're young, you don't think there's consequences, right? Yeah. The only way you know there's consequences is someone, like you said, an OG pulls you to the side and is like, look, but really the culture is chasing youth. So it's like backwards. The older and, women yeah. want to be young. That's the only thing. Like, at old, <laughs> there are women, and I'm not, this is no, this is no disrespect. But no women in their 60s getting BBLs. Like, That's crazy, what is right? happening? What are we doing? So how can a woman who's 23 trust your leadership if you're trying to look like her? Felicia Rashad wasn't trying to look like, I was trying to look like, I was trying to be like her. But if if she was our culture switch on the stage with, you know, her butt out and trying to look like me, then I wouldn't have respected her. So I feel like we don't, of course, there's and people don't believe there's consequences because the older people are lying. <laughs> They're yeah, lying. Yeah. They're lying. They're chasing the same thing. So you have rappers in their 40s and 50s getting into beef with Kodak Black. Like it, <laughs> that makes no <laughs> sense. There should be like in order to lead, you have to lead by example. Yeah. And to me, everybody is chasing the youth, the youth, the younger culture which makes them disrespect. Why would I look at you? You want to be like me. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that clip. I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was very interesting uh, because I do see it. Like on the flip side, you have, like they said, she was saying how a lot of women, you know, are acting younger, you know, like they, they want to do the thing that they see the youngins doing when it comes to the BBLs, they on the Suki hype, they city girls, all of this kind of stuff. And they, and they, uh 30s 40s 50s hell even 60s now but on the opposite side you got the men who they are trying to jump off the porch now they're trying to get with the shit now they're trying to get active in the streets now and it's like dude no, that ship has sailed you know some of them like even what they say doing the rap you know but it's like you can't be out here doing talking about what or trying to um do what these 20 year olds is doing you know like, you done already done lived that moment. If you hadn't lived that moment, you feel me, like how they was, then it wasn't it wasn't for you to live, you know? You you got to be older. So I, I thought that was kind of, that was kind of crazy. That was kind of crazy. Which brings me to my to my book. I'm working on this book right now. Um, It's called How to Be a Man for Fucking Dummies. Y'all going to love this one. I'm going to go through a whole lot of stuff. The main one is going to be Chapter 10, Dating in Corden. Uh, shooting your shot, dating versus hanging out, the warm-up phase, communication, uh, avoiding common mistakes. I, it's going to be a thick book. It's going to be on point. So make sure y'all check that out. Um, stay tuned with it. Now, let's see. What's another video that I have for you guys? Um, hmm. You know what? Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about a little bit of marriage. There's too much mouth. So now we're talking about communication as far as women, how they communicate. Let's let him talk. Yes. I thought this was interesting. Because a lot of our sisters do not know how to talk to men. And I now, with that being said, a lot of men don't know how to talk to women. We're not going to always just put it on the women. But I will say that men value respect a lot. And I think a lot of times um, women may push the barrier you know they push the envelope and it be sometimes they don't even know when they're being disrespectful you know but then also times that um a lot of men let stuff slide and they don't check it from jump and it be all laugh laugh ha 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 play 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 you know like play fighting it's not cool don't do that because you making you making the lines that shouldn't be cross uh blurry you making it muddy and it, it's it's becoming gray, you know, so. Um, then we got to be honest with this. And it's not I'm even just black about. women. It's American women. Don't. Again, I thought that was interesting. It's not just a black woman thing. It's an American woman thing because of the culture and because of what is acceptable for men here. A lot of things that are acceptable for men, it, it, it has bad consequences. So the men have to be better and check things. Don't really know how to talk to men. This is why if you notice... A woman will talk to a man with a level of aggression, and then she'll go and talk to her son like he's her man. 
And guys, feel free, if you guys disagree with what I'm saying, I want to hear from you guys in the comments. A woman will talk to the man she's married to or in a relationship with a level of aggression and disrespect, and then she would turn around and talk to her son as if her son is her man. Now, uh, the reason why I think that's interesting and I don't necessarily agree with it, but I don't necessarily disagree, is because a lot of women talk to each other with a level of aggression and disrespect these days because of the culture. Like, even going as far as calling each other bad bitches, or you feel me, uh, the, the ways that they be talking to as far as the trends, you know? It's a lot of things that we take, you feel me, that be kind of demeaning, you feel me, and vulgar, and we make it a, something, like, I, I think uh, they call it terms of endearment, you know? Like, being called a bitch now, you feel me, by um, by other females, to females is a term of endearment, like being a bad bitch, you feel me, but... It, it ain't that you get what i'm saying like once upon a time that was an out-of-pocket thing and it still is an out-of-pocket thing and it's like now it done got to a point to where you know um it's some niggas being calling themselves with bad bitches you know and then it, even even worse some women will call they nigga a, or they man a bitch you feel me and it don't be no issues like it, and so i think it's i think that's it plays a, a big part Men, men, we have to be better. She'll give him all the love and all the attention. She'll give him all the space. And the, the man in her life is sitting up here like, hold on, first of all, how are you talking to... Now, I helped create this kid. I helped create this kid. And because I'm not your own flesh and blood, because, you know, a lot of our women have a bad habit of saying, you know, men come and go, but your kid's going to be there forever. And that's a dang on lie. We should not be putting the pressure on our kids to be there forever. It's supposed to be the other way. Who we have children with and who we decide to get married to, that's supposed to be forever. And we're supposed to position our kids to go leave the nest, build their own families, contribute to society. But what we do is we make spouses out of our kids and we make roommates out of our spouses. There's too much... I thought that was pretty interesting. To piggyback off of what he's saying, I got OG Kevin Samuels. Talk to black men like you talk to your white boss. And that's all we need from you. Talk to us. Excuse me. Listen, listen. Process. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm listening. Black women know how to check all of that when their job is on the line. Talk to us like we're your white boss and we got no more problems. Here's my retort to the tone of conversation. Approach me like you'd have to approach a white man you were trying to marry you. Then we got no more problems. Step to me like you step to a white man who's paying your paycheck. Treat me like they treat the white man and we got no more issues. Talk to black men like... Okay, so personally, I don't really... Um, I don't really... <sighs> I'm not big on the whole so-called white black uh, chess game because I already know when it comes to etymology, you know, with sovereignty, you feel me, the the, the definitions, um, you know, of being civilly more tuse, you know, Black Laws Dictionary, y'all got to really go check that out and see what these words mean that we throw away, these labels that we put on each other. But uh, some men do feel like this. Some men feel like this. Um, and honestly... I don't, I don't know. I think it just comes to a level of respect, you know, like I don't, I don't, you don't need a slave. You don't need a, 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 a yes, a yes slave. It's, it's okay. You feel me? If, um, your woman don't necessarily agree with you all the time, she ain't got to agree with you all the time. You feel me? She don't, she don't have to kiss your ass. Keep it real. Like she don't have to, just like you don't have to kiss her ass. You feel me? Um, I, but I do believe in respect. You shouldn't be talking to each other disrespectfully. Certain tones should be avoided. Um, certain words should be avoided. You feel me? But, man, y'all grown. You know, like, you you entitled to express yourself how you see fit. Especially if you feel that you are being disrespected. But let it be known that you are being disrespected and, and do not escalate the situation. Try and de-escalate the situation. And also get your point across like an adult. Logically, like an adult, you know, and not don't go tick for tat. Don't play the ping pong game. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, I be playing a lot of Kevin Samuel stuff. I don't agree with everything he be saying, but some of the stuff he be on point with. 
This one, eh, I don't know. I think I got the message of what he was trying to say. I just don't agree with the word use exactly. <laughs> but yeah, hey, shout out to uh, OG Kevin Sam. All right. I thought this was interesting. It's crazy. I thought this was crazy. Google the richest women in the world, like where they got their money from. It's rough out there, guys. They ain't starting businesses. <laughs> They're marrying dummies. <laughs> It's almost all of it is divorce. Almost all of it's divorce money. Feminists do not want to hear this. But there was one woman who was the richest woman ever from a startup company. Elizabeth Holmes. She had a, ran a company called Theranos. She started it herself, dropped out of college to start this company, and it was a total fraud. It was all fraudulent. She's going to jail forever. <laughs> she was worth $34 billion at one point. It was a blood testing company. They falsified all sorts of data, and they lied to investors and all sorts of shit. This lady, she used to dress like Steve Jobs. She wore a black turtleneck and everything, and I saw her speak once. Google the richest women in the world. I thought that was kind of crazy. Now, nah. <laughs> uh, I saw that was crazy because you got you got it like that, you know, when it comes to uh, divorce rate. But then even this, you know. One twenty eight. So, woman takes her man of four years to look at cheap engagement rings and asks what his excuse. He says, I haven't found the one to marry. This girl said, I pray I never, like, I pray a love like this never finds me. I thought that was kind of crazy. 128. That, that, that's all it takes. And what's your excuse? I haven't found anyone to marry. That's deep. 128. They're, they're cute. They're cute. And if you want to be more expensive, they're here. I thought this was wild. Um, yeah, it's it's tough out here in this dating game, man. Um, but y'all go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what y'all think. Uh, give me y'all comments. Tell me what y'all don't like. Tell me what y'all do like. Tell me what I need to do better. Tell me what kind of conversations y'all want to hear about. Just tell me everything. All right, and I will catch y'all on the next one.